I think it was the Fallon Fox uh, incident in MMA yeah. 12 years ago or whatever. The female fighters did not know they were going up against a male. One mm -hmm. woman had her skull cracked and she said, I've never felt mm -hmm. something, a, a strike so powerful before. I think what happens is we've socialized people from a very young age. And I, and I, you know what? I blame comic books and <laughs> cartoons. Mm -hmm. I, 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 we've talked about this. Uh, watching X-Men or other cartoons when you're a kid, there is no distinction between males and females. They are mm -hmm. both superpowers. They're both equally right. as powerful. Right. So then I, I think you get young women who grow up on this stuff and they're maybe when they're young teenagers, the, the distinctions are different, but after 14, 15, right. you look at male grip strength. The average male is stronger than the strongest female in terms of grip strength, which mm -hmm. is, it's like a wild thing to consider. Then you end up, I think, with many women who begin entering sports, genuinely believing that there is no distinction. Not all women, I think a lot of women clearly understand that men and mm -hmm. women are very different, right. but a lot of women are probably thinking until like- Until they could, get punched in the face. Until, in, in, until, like Mike Tyson says, everybody has a plan playing. until they get punched in the face. Until right. they end up in an MMA ring, right. fighting with a biological male, and take one strike and their skull cracks. And we don't want that to happen. No. But the 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 the, the leftist worldview, the blank slate theory says it's That's fine. That's where I was going next is the the entire this entire conversation I've had this a million times is it's it's founded on two things. One is the blank slate. Um, the other thing is uh, social constructionism. We think that if we pair up the blank slate, like everybody's equal, everybody has a, an equal chance. We're all, we're all basically the same except for the plumbing. And other than that, we're all, you know, everybody can do what everybody else can. Then you have the social construction narrative that goes along with that. Everything that you're about is because society embedded it in you. Both of those are patently false. And We've gone from, let's say, like right around uh, 2000, once we have the internet, the rise of the internet, we have more and more um, access to information these days. We can see empirically that men and women are different. We can see empirically that men and men are different and women and women are different. So when we're talking about uh, female skateboarders, I think within that context of that particular sport, there are some women who are going to excel in that sport within the context of it being a female division sport. But then there's also men who are going to be playing at a different level in in uh, the context of a male sport. But the the, the fundamental difference here is we have been uh, acculturated and socialized for so long to believe that the blank slate is something that we all should aspire to. Or we we can make a better society as a result of it, or egalitarianism, as you were saying. That's really where egalitarian comes from. It comes from this communitarian way of thinking about things rather than a hierarchical way of thinking things. For men, men tend to organize uh, societies in hierarchies. Women tend to organize it in the round it tends to be more communitarian because it takes a village to raise a child they're more interested in sort of the collective whereas men are always trying to get one step up above each other so that's how we f that's how we rank our, our our soldiers in you know the the hierarchy of like say you know you're the colonel and uh, the chain of command right same thing applies to our businesses you're the ceo you're the coo you're the cfo you're whatever down all to the janitor right so we tend to organize things in hierarchies w women tend to organize it in the round ever since right around like say the the post-sexual revolution era we have been organizing society in the round we've been organizing it in egalitarian terms in communitarian terms at the expense of all of these institutions let's just say that were prior organized via hierarchy. So when we're talking about patriarchy, patriarchy is a hierarchy, whereas for matriarchy, ideally anyways, should be in the round. It should be something that's more egalitarian. The problem is, is that's no way to organize society, either one way or the other, where we're, where we're, we're grossing out in one or we're grossing out in the other. Right now, that's why I kept saying we live in a gynocentric social order ever since we've had hormonal birth control, because that was the great equalizer from as far back as, say, 1965. So what we're seeing right now is we're like, whenever you see what was it the um the uh the guy who was the swimmer who was like the number 427th male swimmer becomes the number one female swimmer when he declares that he actually identifies as a female now he's the number one now he wins because he's biologically a male who is competing in the context of a female support uh you know sport in this case it's swimming right and we go oh yes that's we, we love that well, that's fine when it's swimming. It's not so fine when now you've got to go and do an MMA fight and somebody's going to get their skull cracked because we still believe that men and women should be equal and they should be able to do this until 
the rubber meets the road. Right. Well, I, I've got some bad news for you, Arolo. Okay. Uh, did you know, we have the story, you can pull it up, Caitlin Clark makes history mm. surpassing Steph Curry's three-point record. Oh my gosh. Did you know that she beat his record? And all she had to do was have a three-point line that was two foot three inches shorter mm. than his. And well, a smaller ball. Mm-hmm. And a smaller ball <laughs> going smaller into ball. the well, same cylinder. Also, so. here's a, and here, that's, a, that's a good example. Now, here's the other thing that happens is when, when women want to compete in those areas, they have to either change the nature of the game or if they, they have to get a whole lot better. When the, yep. the, when the w, smaller ball too. When the WNBA first came out, there was talk about um, lowering the baskets of, of for, so that they could because life under the under the rim so sucked. They, they wanted yeah, yeah so that they could dunk right. Well, they <laughs> threw that idea out later on because they got more you know taller women who could actually dunk because they thought that that was what's going to put you know asses in the seats for the WNBA. Uh-huh. No, no, it's still still struggling <laughs> as a sport today. But the, 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 the fundamental lesson of that is that we're going to change the nature of the game to suit the, to suit the talents of the player. Now, that's in sports. Think about how we, we use that same like institution in other things. We're going to lower the requirements for women to be in combat positions in the U.S. military because we want to get more women in there because we still believe in this blank slate bullshit where we think that women can be just as effective as, you know, combat soldiers as men can be. Let no one you, thinks that, though. Let me, let me tell you. No, no one thinks that, but, but I mean, you will understand what I'm saying. Like, the dynamic is change the nature, fundamentally change the nature of the game so girls can dunk. Could I, I say half a line? Hmm? I, I don't think you're going to disagree with this. We know the WNBA has taken a bath. It's a parasite on the NBA. Hmm. It's never made a dollar. Uh, 31 seasons out of 31. So they, they're not actually trying to put asses in the seats. This is top down. This is top down imposed uh, shell game. And you have to ask why. It's reinforcing me, the narrative. Let me, let me right? tell you a funny story. So uh, I, a friend of mine growing up is, uh, was for a period one of the top female skateboarders. She actually was really good. Comparable to the guys in Chicago. She was like, for whatever reason, way better. Uh, good friend of mine and uh i got to go with her to the x games when i was 18 and she was 17 the third place prize i believe at the time was like 1300 dollars for mm-hmm. women in the x games for men it was thirteen thousand. at least that's that's what we were told at the time i don't know the numbers could be slightly different first place for the men's was like 30 grand first place was the, for the women's was like three grand and so there was this organization that uh i had actually i, I knew the founder of and i knew several several of the pro females that were involved in it said this is discrimination. You have two contests. You have a men's contest and a women's contest. You then give the women 10% of what the men get. That's sex discrimination. If you want to pay the top prizes, ESPN at the time said, women don't sell tickets. And their response was, you selling tickets is your problem, not the athlete's problem. If you're saying you want the best men and the best women in the world, you can't pay them separately. It was an interesting argument. ESPN refused and said, we don't care because we don't make money. We'd sooner just get rid of it than have to spend 10x on something that doesn't make money. So what I was told by some of the people involved was they announced a press conference to announce either a lawsuit or some action to be taken against Disney ESPN for sex-based discrimination and paying them in less. However, the problem was the female athletes did not want to boycott. They were happy to be getting whatever sponsorships they could. They were happy to get whatever cash they could. And they were concerned that ESPN would cancel the women's sporting, the women's street uh, events because quite literally nobody bought tickets to go see them. Mm. So what this organization did, at least this is what they told me, they announced to uh, publicly a press conference and they said the top female athletes in the world are going to be giving a press conference, breaking down sex pay, uh, pay discrimination at the X Games. And they sent notice to ESPN saying, you're not going to be happy with what comes next. Mm. However, knowing that the women did not actually want to do it, didn't want to boycott, they didn't tell any of the women that was, there was going to be a press conference. Mm. And so when the press conference happened, no one showed up. When ESPN then asks, whoa, wait, 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 where are they at? Where's the press conference? They went, wow, I guess they're boycotting you. You're in trouble now. Now the press is going to be that they're, they're, they're refusing to even show up. ESPN mm-hmm. immediately backed down and said, we will pay parity now. Mm-hmm. So now you have the X Games subsidizing sporting events that don't sell tickets yeah so this is like no extortion one, just it, it is it's extortion and no one's actually this dumb no it's emperor's new clothes everyone knows mm-hmm. female sports fail everyone knows the girls aren't as good as the guys everyone knows sports are fundamentally masculine so you you have to ask what's the point 
and we're, we're all well, agreeing now and, and conservatives don't want to push the conversation beyond where it's at and, and what it really is if you go check agenda 2030 and their sustainable development goals female sports has a couple paragraphs but they're, they, they're, they're pushing that they want yeah, population control there's there's no female sports anymore where, where, where we are at right now yeah. is the, the, the propaganda, the lies, the manipulation, and allowing males to compete in female sports, but you never see the inverse. It's, it's fascinating yeah. that the, the, the hypocrisy or the paradox doesn't exist in the mind of the left sure. liberal or whatever, mm. that we actually don't get ever controversy around a biological female attempting to compete in male Correct. sports. And the reality is for most major league sports, I believe for all of them, except for uh, college, there is no male-female distinction in the major leagues. A woman is allowed to try it for the NBA. A woman is allowed to try it for the NFL. They just don't make it. Many women have actually tried to be kickers in the NFL, mm. and they've come close, but they've never quite made it. Yeah. There is no restriction for them. In female sports, there is a restriction, but now they've removed that. So we have seen a couple things. Mac Beggs is a biological female uh, taking male cross-sex hormones, identifying as a, as a male, and competing against females. Th th it was actually due to the law requiring... Uh, women to compete against women and men against men that resulted in someone taking testosterone, a mm. female, winning all of these fights and having more muscle mass and, and, and things like that. And then you end up, of course, with the same scenario where it's biological males competing against females and not in male leagues. It only, only ever affects female sports, in which case we are entering, we are entering the room. We are walking through the door where there will be no more female sports. It will just be identity-based sports. There will be the merit league, and then there will be the identity league. Well, with all due respect, I'm, I meant it more generically. I mean, fe female sports, in my view, is a contradiction in terms. What's a far better, um, uh, more squarely oriented with the conception of human sexuality, the human person, female, men and women, is cheerleading. And if you look at the numbers of high school cheerleading, it's gone down drastically. I, I've taught high school two different times, separated by about 10 years. And the number of girls that wanted to be cheerleaders, so it was still what the cool girl did in the 80s sure. and 90s. And when I taught in the early 2000s, it was what all the cool chicks did. <laughs> in by, by 2014, when I stepped back into the classroom. Full disclosure, the, my wife was a cheerleader. <laughs> no, no, but, but it's, it's well ordered. Women are, this is a natural conception that's utterly consistent with what women are and what they want to do they want to cheer on the boys but, but, now but, but, whether you, well, we're talking the gender dysphoria thing are we talking but, wave I, one gender dysphoria or wave three we should push past that and just talk about what a woman really is if I, I know many women who enjoy skateboarding and want to skateboard and they want to have contests between each other and they know they can't beat guys and they respect that mm -hmm. If women They're want, being pushed. Everybody should be not, able not, to play sports absolutely. conditioned. I, I really do not believe that's the, true. The, my, my, well, my, my friends, uh, like who I grew up with skating with, female pros, genuinely love skating and just want to skate. Yeah, people. But it, it's, 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 it's not the same as the drive guys have. Right. But that's what I'm talking but, about. But, but I don't think you can just say women would rather cheerlead. No, no. My, look, I have six daughters. Okay. I, I have one son and six daughters. Me and my son go out hunting. Me and my son go out on the basketball court. I was a basketball player. He, he's learning to be a basketball player at six. The girls wander out of the house. They're learning to sew. They're learning to cook with my wife. They like playing girl things, make believe. They wander out and they're like, oh, daddy, can we do layup drills with you and Gaby? Yeah, of course. They're interested in it for four minutes. What you can't, what you cannot discount in a gynocentric society that, that this guy's described for many, many years um, quite aptly is the fact that fathers have gotten it into their mind like, oh, I guess this is the new normal now. And they're pushing their daughters. So my daughters come out there, they play for four minutes and they raise then they their daughters old. like their sons. Yeah, they raise their daughters like their sons. So then they go back in the house and they go do something they really want to do. But I don't, I don't tell them no. You can't come shoot layups. I, was well, look, I do keep say. Gabe out there, and and he he wants to stay out there. But you, there's a fundamentally different female nature. So we all, I thought, agreed that uh, sex egalitarianism. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, wrong. So I'm Let's gonna parse it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go like I, I agree with what you're saying, but I'm gonna go on the biological side of things here. Like if we look at Megan Rapinoe, for example, who uh, you know wants to have equal pay for like you know playing soccer and everything. If you look at it from the economics perspective, actually the female soccer team is making more money than the male soccer team. If you by rate of comparison and you put it like within market versus market, the female the female soccer team is actually making more money than the male soccer team is because they make more money and as a portion of that particular uh, take of the money that they're making right there. As a result, 
we still have women saying, well, we're not being paid as much as they are. They just simply just don't understand the economics of it, but they want that equality. They, they want, we want, we want gender parity. We want uh, 77 cents on the dollar, whatever it is, you know, the, the gender pay gap, yeah, that's right? not real, but, but it's not, it is not real, but uh, <laughs> just ask Dr. <laughs> Phil. Um, but the, um, the, the long and short of it here is that when you have a Megan Rapinoe talking about that, it's building that narrative. And right. really what it's building is this idea that we're, we're supposed to be a blank slate society that we're supposed to all be equal. Well, I, and the I, problem with the equality is that equality is a false god. Okay, so when we're talking, like, I don't believe in equality. Period. End of story. Because when we're talking about equality, it doesn't exist inside of a vacuum, like every, like Megan Rapinoe would like to say. Well, it's apples for apples. It's not apples for apples. You are female. They are male. You are in a different market than they are. It's this understand. It's this idea of having sort of this idealized e egalitarian equalist society. Whereas, what are we? Uh, where, where are we expecting from e either sex? So when we're talking, it's easy to make this example about sports. Okay, because men men have you know we have broader shoulders. We have uh, more upper body muscle mass, everything else. It's easy to point that out. What about when we're talking about mathematics? What about when we're talking about like chess. things that are chess? What, are, what about when we're talking about other things that aren't even necessarily chess. physical? Chess is fascinating. But well, I forget you, the name of the teacher, the, the the college guy who was talking about how women do not excel in certain aspects of like uh, men have better spatial ability to like, yeah. you know, rotate a three-dimensional object. We can throw with more force. We're innately born with that as our firmware to be able to do certain things. We have certain predilections that we're yeah. born with because it's just built into our psyches it's built well, into our thing but then we're going to say well that's horrible it can can you teach a young woman a young girl to be a pretty good pitcher for um for a little league team yeah you can do that but it's easier to do it with a male because a male already has that innate firmware that's already part of their starting path yeah Let's, and uh, like i really like this point you just made Rolo. What conservatives that are kind of tepid on this, which is most everyone, they'll be agreeing with us. And then you you push the point and you're like, well, I could te I could literally drag my six girls out there for as long as I keep my son out there and they could get slightly less inadequate at basketball, but they'd be unhappy and I would be conditioning them with gender dysphoria and conservatives won't take the point that the capacity to do something um, as it's rejected by the natural law, which tells us our male nature, females, their female nature, because I could go to the closet, my wife's closet and put on her dress and uh, it's not like a force field. It flies off my body or something like that. I can't get the dress to stay on. Conservatives will say, well, if he has the capacity to put on a dress, I guess it's not wrong. And to, like, we're all tempted to start going there. Tim, you're tempted to start going, well, like, Girls can stand on a skateboard and learn to roll and learn a couple basic flip tricks. Like, I know they can. There's nothing in nature that repels them from doing that. What well, I guess we're saying is that, and this is pure agreement so far, <laughs> is that they're being conditioned at all levels from the top down and their fathers to, to want to do that. Whereas before, that's not in their nature to want to do it. A, a neighbor the other day, really nice guy, came by. He saw me shooting with my boy. He was like, you got six girls. You've got to get them out there. I'm like, N -n no, they, they don't want to be out here, man. <laughs> He's like, what about the, the female is, NBA player you said? No, I, I don't know, man. The, I, I, I know women who skateboard, who chose to skateboard, continue to skateboard, skated their whole lives and enjoy doing it. It's yeah, fine. The, the, the he, exception makes bad law. Well, you play exception, sports. But I, women can like, play sports. We're talking about professional. You want the best humans. No, 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 no. It's what not I'm about gender is, at that stat. I'm talking I, about habit I, and I, habituating I'm asking, people. If your daughter said, no, I want to play basketball. I don't want to go back inside. Would you let her? She, she, none of the six of them have. I'm so just that's playing not, the that's numbers. That's the question I asked. No, no, no. no I, but what I'm telling you is if your daughter exception said, makes bad law. If she said, I want to stay outside and play basketball with you, I would say, yeah, well, that's fine, but I'm also your father. So you can stay out here maybe a little longer than the other girls, but since you're, and this this wouldn't happen and doesn't happen, but, um, and I, I have a larger than a bas female basketball team as all my uh, crypto feminist neighbors have pointed out to me. Uh, it doesn't happen, but if it did, I'd say, okay, you could stay out a couple extra minutes. Now go in the house and learn to cook. That's what a father does. And that's the difference between conservatives in 2014 and 2015 objecting to third wave gender dysphoria which is that like bruce jenner puts on a dress and says ontologically right, right, speaking i can be right, a, but, a female but back to first the first wave gender dysphoria is functional right, 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 but let's stay on point my point well, is uh, this is this is at the heart the of the point matter. i'm making is i know many females who skateboard hmm? and if their dad said you can't skateboard anymore 
they would hide a skateboard at their friend's house, run away, mm -hmm. and go skateboard. Well, I'm not sure what they would do. Uh, I, no, I know for are. a fact. Like I, you I, know what they would do hypothetically. I, I'm not I trying to debate you. I'm just people, saying. People, there were very few female skateboarders, one or two, and they wanted to skate, and they would go skate, and they would go skate by themselves. Well, that's but that's partly hypothetical. What's not hypothetical? What do you mean? Is, I'm, I'm telling are, you. Are you aware? Experience. Okay. No, you said what they would do if my if friends their growing up, and I'm at the X Games, and there's dozens of of young women who skate, chose to be there, wanted to be there, I asked you. for the equipment, said they want to be there. And I think it, I do not agree with the idea that the father should be like, no, here's here. Well, as a father of six girls, um, it's absolutely your job to correct and say, look, this is ultimately not going to make you happy. If any of my kids are running into the street, I correct them all the time, Tim. And I say, no, this is not ultimately good for you. If my kids want to eat strychnine. They, they never have. I'd say, no, this is not I good for you. I don't think women if, playing oh, sports is eating strychnine. Oh, I didn't say the, the same thing, but this is just a hypothetical. You gave the hypothetical of them running away. And all I'm that's, saying that's, is it's not good for them. That's gender dysphoria to do the same things as men. And the, what, what, what I'm challenging conservatives to do is to have a look at the real difference between men and women, because we all, we all agreed on it, all four of us. There's a real difference and say... Why are we so uncomfortable with the differences, the functional differences between men and women? I'm not talking about putting on a dress when you're a guy, but like what you should familiarize yourself with is uh, hardcore feminist sociologists Wolfer and Stevenson uh, did a study in the 70s after women went were, were driven into the workforce by, by shame. Um, it's called The Paradox of Declining Female Happiness. Time Life has covered it every five years. They notice as women went, entered in droves the workforce, really act like men in 1970, female happiness, particularly white suburban female happiness, went down every year. And they call it a paradox. I would just say this is a phenomenon. There is a female nature, Tim. There well, is a male nature. And this is, is this yeah. is why <laughs> it's bliss. But this is why I'm saying as a, as a dad of six girls, I don't have that luxury like i want them to be the most happy meaning a moral eudaimonian aristotelian happiness i want them to be the most happy possible so if they run in the street that's obvious danger if they want to start doing boy things five six seven eight hours a day that will make them feel like inadequate boys you said all the girls you knew aren't good skaters the 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 they're good for females the women's in the context. exactly they're good for females exactly. but they're always going to be comparing themselves to the standard Tim, in a male sport do you know do you know what a ripstick is yes ripstick yeah yeah, yeah with the, the, the it was sean, it was real popular out. back in like the the early well, uh, 2000s shout right? out to sean hover he can do tray flips and what's a ripstick a ripstick is like it's like a skateboard that has two wheels right it's, it, <laughs> it it's got they go like this oh cool it's like there's a cylinder in the middle with a joint and then there's two platforms that work interdependent uh, independently of each other with single wheels that go in every direction cool and you move by snaking your feet oh. and it's got a tail you can pop mm -hmm. it and uh, Sean Hover, he's a my my daughter can do a rip, flip can do a ripstick. She so, I, I and I was so I was gonna say I was just to answer your question yes because I have a daughter my daughter's twenty five but um, she's not doing ripsticks anymore. <laughs> Sorry. Lindsay Adams Hawkins married yeah. Travis Pastrana. She's mm -hmm. one of the top female pros in the world. One of the, she's she's the first female to land a McTwist. Mm -hmm. Travis Pastrana is based uh, sponsored by Black Rifle, I believe, and they're married and they have lots of kids. Mm -hmm. I don't see why Lindsay should have been told not to be a skateboarder. True. Yeah. I mean, it's it's mm -hmm. playing for fun is one thing and getting good at something is it can be great for your confidence. But playing professionally, you just want the best humans. And I. but anyway, I, you brought up cheerleading and I think it is super important role. This is something I've learned. They say in like football, the, the crowd is the 13th man on the mm -hmm. field, because if you've ever done cheerleading or if you've ever been in the crowd and the enemy, the enemy team, the opposing team can hear your voice for war when they hit the ball and you scream and the people that are on the defensive shock and stand get shocked and like miss the ball because they're terrified by your scream you win as a cheerleader like the woman empowering the men is a yes. big part of the success of the team but i will also or not doesn't not the women but people empowering the, the crowd empowering the team with their voices and their movement is like massively important it's similar with a woman in a family you know that's what she's doing for the man in a lot of ways but why does it not have to be well like do we all agree there's a female nature and a male nature absolutely just can we go around the we table? gotta I know you i know you and i agree there but I think I, I think I think it's really a masculine. I, I I think we have to be a little bit more nuanced and say there's a male female male female bimodal uh, uh, nature or tendencies. 
W- women fall into one camp, men fall into one camp. So not a nature? No, not no, no. I think, I think I agree with you, but I'm saying I want to be a little bit more nuanced in how I describe it. I know there's exceptions to rules. It's a bell, it's a bell but, curve. It's bimodal. There's an overlap, but mm-hmm. there's a predominant 90 What I always tell people, though, is exception makes bad law. And there's a reason. The, the law of averages always wins. The reason that th- those two feminists, um, Wolfer and Stevenson, their research was so important was because they wanted the data to show something that they were honest enough to publish otherwise. They, they gainsaid their own conclusion, which was, we thought that women would be happier when they started doing some doing a function. I'm not talking about gender dysphoria actually claiming to be men, but functionally uh, acting like men. And, and functional gender dysphoria, just feminism, well, I, I, is far, it's actually far more pervasive than Bruce Jenner putting on a dress. It affects 99% of women out there, and it's far more insidious. I think, and they're like, wow, women are becoming unhappy. I want my daughters to grow up and be happy in the Aristotelian Christian sense. That that means you correct them. You're like, yeah, you can do that. Like I said, I, I didn't, people are going to be seeking to, you, you know, can, uh, liberals do this, Tim. They're going to be like, this guy said he will never let his daughter out. Like, no, that's cool. And if one of the, the six daughters wants to stay out an extra five or 10 minutes, fine. But they don't want to stay out much longer than that. The way the guys, by their nature, want to stay out one, two, three, four hours. And yeah, there's exception makes bad law. So there might be one girl out of a million that wants to stay out all day long and skate and shoot. But that's bad law for us to legislate in society. Girls well, naturally legislate. I got a question for you. Yeah. If you, ha- I know you don't have a daughter, but like if you had a daughter, would you allow her to uh, compete in beauty pageants? Probably not. Why? Uh, if we're talking about like child beauty pageants, where well, I mean, you know, from like say I don't know, twelve, if, thirteen, somewhere around there. If it was like a like a wholesome actual she really wanted to do that she, but, i really want to be in this daddy the answer is only if it's like proper uh, uh formal dress is the like when when they're dressing up she's not a swimsuit like but the, the child pageants i say absolutely no absolutely mm-hmm. no if it is more of like the combination of talent where they have like what's your talent what's your you, you, then you have to speak then you have to wear a formal dress and display absolutely mm-hmm. have a platform have a have a yeah like an, I, I don't like the weird sexualized child beauty pageants, mm. so I'd say no to the generic. But if it's how we typically view uh, wear a formal dress, there's like there's like the dress portion, then there's the talent portion, then there's the speech portion. That's fine. Uh, so the, the reason I'm asking that is because that is a more stereotypical female proclivity, let's just say, to be a more of a girly girl as opposed to being the tomboy, I want to skate, right? My daughter yep. can do a ripstick. She's not competing in ripstick competitions anymore, but she has. my daughter has been in pageants before, right? Mm-hmm. Because she really wanted to be in that. She really wanted to do good and she really wanted to apply herself to that. I think one of the problems that we have um, particularly in uh, the 21st century anyways, is because because we believe in this sort of gender e- equalism, I think, is that we tend to say, okay, well, uh, how horrible it is that you you won't encourage your daughter to do you know skateboarding, but you will, you're okay with her doing beauty pageants or the opposite way around. Because when he was talking about like there are, well, and I believe you were too, talking about the differences in male nature versus female nature, there are certain proclivities that both boys and girls tend to gravitate towards. Yes. But if we say, well, we don't want her to go into a, a, a beauty pageant, but we do want to encourage her to be a skater, why isn't it the other way around? The funny thing is, uh, you guys know that, do you, you have kids? Mm-hmm. I, I talk to every person who has a son and a daughter, mm-hmm. and they instantly tell you boys and girls are different. Yeah. No question, there's no debate, uh, I was hanging out with some family friends and they were like, we did nothing. And the boy started smashing things with a little hammer. Yeah. Yeah. He, he just did. Yeah, so yeah. And the girl picked up the, the he would, when he started hitting the stuffed animal, the little girl picked it up and ran away with it to protect it. Yeah. And they were like, yep. we didn't teach them to do or they that. start making f- guns with their fingers yeah. or they like make sticks to whap on each other. Yeah. It's, and, exactly. oh, and in that vein, all I was saying is, and, and I'm not defensive on the point, I'd, I'd love to have rational uh, debate about it but mm-hmm. it's better for a woman to get good at woman things and for men to get better at men things Let's, and they stop teaching home ec in school and shop i mean and yeah shop. yeah it's, woman it's, thing it's man thing women don't know how to sew like grown-up uh gen x and millennial mothers don't know how to sew to teach their daughters men to sew. don't know what what phillips screwdrivers are I, I shouldn't. I, I'm to drive a, a stick. A, a bit hyperbolic, <laughs> but yeah, can't drive sticks. No, that that works for me when crime goes up. 
You hear all these mm -hmm. stories where someone tries to jack a car and they're like, I can't drive stick. And it's like, you're out of luck, buddy.